Normally, I'm not a person that likes to cover trending topics, but in this case, I am making an exception. The deal that has been rumored for the last month or so is now officially official. The Walt Disney Company is buying 21st Century Fox for $52.4 billion. This also includes the assumption of debt, which is $13.4 billion, so the total value of the deal is $66.4 billion. It's a pretty massive deal, and it is something that I never thought in my wildest imaginations would ever happen, so... Uh, yeah, they literally just announced it. I literally just woke up and boom! Oh, it's announced! Uh, and you just hear highlighting a lot of the biggest bullet points. Uh, in the deal, Disney would acquire ownership of 21st Century Fox, both the film and TV studio, FX Networks, National Geographic, 22 Regional Sports Networks, they would also acquire a majority stake in Hulu, uh, the 39% stake in Sky, and Star in India, among a bunch of other stuff. This deal is pretty massive. It is, uh, <laughs> I, I'm speechless. I honestly never thought this would even happen. This is just insane. Now, keep in mind that they're not acquiring 21st Century Fox as a whole. They're acquiring most of its assets, so stuff like the Fox Broadcasting Company, Fox News, Fox Business Network, FS1, and FS2 are not included in the deal. Even if they wanted to, they couldn't buy them because it would go into a lot of monopolies and antitrust laws and all that other important business jargon. Uh, since Disney already owned ABC, they couldn't uh, by Fox, and uh, since Disney already owned ESPN, combining it with Fox Sports again would be an antitrust issue, and that would be going into monopoly territory. So even if they wanted to, they couldn't buy them. So important to know. Uh, it is. It, it's a lot of stuff here. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so. This I'm, I'm just reading this off the official Walt Disney Company website, and uh, <clears throat> here's a I'm going to read this. The acquisition of this stellar collection of businesses from 21st Century Fox reflects the increasing consumer demand for a rich diversity of entertainment experiences that are more compelling, accessible, and convenient than ever before, said Robert A. Iger, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the Walt Disney Company. We're honored and grateful that Rupert Murdoch has entrusted us with the future of businesses he spent a lifetime building, and we're excited about this extraordinary opportunity to significantly increase our portfolio of well-loved franchises and branded content to greatly enhance our growing direct-to-consumer offerings. The deal will also substantially expand our international reach, allowing us to offer world-class storytelling and innovative distribution platforms to more consumers in key markets around the world. We are extremely proud of all that we have built uh, at 21st Century Fox, and I firmly believe that this combination with Disney will unlock even more value for shareholders as the new Disney continues to set the pace in what is an exciting and dynamic industry," said Rupert Murdoch, executive chairman of 21st Century Fox. Furthermore, I'm convinced that this combination under Bob Iger's leadership will be one of the greatest companies in the world. I'm grateful and encouraged that Bob has agreed to stay on and is committed to succeeding with a combined team that is second to none. Yes, as part of the deal, Bob Iger has extended his tenure as CEO until 2021, which was already rumored when this deal was in its final stages that he would stay on as Disney CEO, which makes a lot of sense because he has done an incredibly great job at building Disney into really what it is in its current state, because before he took over Disney it was, uh, uh, creatively at least, Disney was kind of floundering. And then he took over and then everything's changed. The stock value has more than doubled, or hell, even tripled since he took over. Uh, you know, back then it was just below $30 a share, and now it's well over 100 So that should really speak volumes to the great job that he's done uh, as Disney CEO. Um, this is a huge benefit to their streaming service because with the Fox content and their huge library of film and TV, it will more than double their film and television library, making their upcoming streaming service even more compelling. And for those of you who were worried that the Fantastic Four might not, trans bleh, might not transition over to Disney in this deal, because the film rights are technically owned by Constantine Film, they just licensed out the exclusive distribution rights to Fox in 1999, 
They, they don't worry. They literally say in the press release, the agreement also provides Disney with the opportunity to reunite the X-Men, Fantastic Four, and Deadpool with the Marvel family under one roof and create richer, more complex worlds of interrelated characters and stories that audiences have shown they love. So, that's as clear as crystal that the Fantastic Four will be going to Disney. So, for those of you who were freaking out about it, you can now breathe a sigh of relief. Also, Avatar would also become a Disney property. The addition of Avatar to its family of films also promises expanded opportunities for consumers to watch and experience storytelling within these extraordinary fantasy worlds. Already guests at Disney's Animal Kingdom Park at Walt Disney World Resort can experience the magic of Pandora, the world of Avatar, a new land inspired by the Fox film franchise that opened earlier this year. And through the incredible storytelling of National Geographic, whose mission it is to explore and protect our planet and inspire new generations through education initiatives and resources, Disney will be able to offer more ways than ever before to bring kids and families to the world and all that is in it so yeah and it makes sense uh because they already invested more in the avatar franchise than fox did so in hindsight it only seems sense for disney to take full control over the franchise although it is going to create a lot of release scheduling headaches with their other big sci-fi franchise star wars but you know they'll cross that bridge to come when they come to it and uh yeah, also, the 22 regional sports networks that, it, that it are included in the deal will greatly bolster ESPN, which has been struggling in the last few years as they've been losing subscribers and their profits have eroded because, you know, they're, they're tied in all these ironclad sports contracts that have essentially weighed down the bottom line and they've laid off thousands of employees in the last few years. So, not to say that this will essentially stop the bleeding, but it is... It, it, it'll they'll, they'll put a band-aid on it at least for the time being and it will likely be rebranded under the ESPN name also in terms of sky which Fox has been trying to acquire the remaining of since last year um, they expect that transition to close by June 30th 2018 and in that event the ownership of sky would transfer over to Disney and it's said that Disney will face less regulatory scrutiny than Fox would so yeah, a lot to really unpack. This is uh, <laughs> this is quite a whopper. Uh, it's gonna take some time to really fully process this that this is actually happening, but uh, it is happening, and uh, the major studios have gone from six to five. So it's no longer the big six; it is the big five now. The transition will take about twelve to eighteen months to close. You know, going through all the, you know, the traditional regulatory government scrutiny and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, by this time next year, Fox will be fully integrated into Disney. And that is a uh, exciting and a scary prospect at the same time. If you're wondering why I'm wearing my robe, it's because they literally announced it really early this morning. Far earlier than I was expecting. And I wanted to make this video as quickly as possible, so you're going to have to deal with my robe. And no, it's not a Jedi thing. Uh, anyways, that's not important. Um, also included in this deal that I forgot to mention, they would acquire ownership of Blue Sky Studios, the company behind the Ice Age and Rio films. Um, they didn't announce who would essentially lead Blue Sky, if they would even keep Blue Sky. I think they probably will keep Blue Sky. In any event, they'll likely hand control over to Ed Catmull and John Lasseter, assuming he gets back from his six month sabbatical, which he probably will. And at that point, it'll really be up to those two to really decide, to decide the most effective path for Blue Sky going forward. Now, keep in mind, at the time this deal closes, Spies in Disguise will already have wrapped production and will be close to release in End Nimona, which, by the way, is being directed by Patrick Osborne, who directed the Oscar-winning short Feast for Disney Animation, will be about to go... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm. it's really early in the morning, so I'm screwing up my words. By the time the deal closes, Nimona will be actually going into production. It'll be close to going into production, so those two will still release. Anything after that is kind of up in the air. I still think they'll find a way to reboot Ice Age, I think that's definitely on the cards, and I think a Rio 3 is also possibly in the cards, and who knows, maybe some animated adaptations of Marvel or Star Wars, hell, hell, that, that's now possible, so, <laughs> uh, 
I don't think they'll sell Blue Sky to Warner Brothers, Sony, or Paramount. I don't think that's going to happen because I certainly don't think they're going to give their competition a leg up in the animation space. That would just be dumb. Um, keep in mind that Fox Animation is more than just Blue Sky as they would also... Uh, you know, their deals with Tonko House and Locksmith Animation, which is an animation studio in the UK, would also transfer over to Disney in this deal. So their animation assets would more than double. And yes, Anastasia, who many people assume is a Disney princess, can now finally become a Disney princess. Possibly. I, I don't know. We'll see. It'll It's all up in the air. The remaining Fox businesses that will stay with the Murdoch family will be spun off into a new independent company. I don't know if it'll still be called 21st Century Fox. There's also a possibility that it could merge with News Corp, which is the publishing arm of the company. For those of you who don't know, all of the Fox properties used to be under News Corp until they split off in 2013 into two separate companies. News Corp, the publishing arm, which owns publications such as the Wall Street Journal and New York Post, and 21st Century Fox, which was the media and entertainment sign. So the new slimmed down company, whatever they decide to call it, could possibly remerge with News Corp. So they haven't really made an official announcement on that. That's purely speculation, but it is a likely thing. Uh, <laughs> Oh, what else, what else can I really say about this? This is quite insane. Oh, yes. They would also acquire distribution rights to the first Star Wars film, a.k.a. A New Hope. So that opens up the possibility to a re-release of the original trilogy in its unaltered state, which is something fans have been clamoring for for years. So, to all you Star Wars fans out there, Merry Christmas. <laughs> uh... Uh, there, there's also like some speculation that Sean Bailey, who currently is the president of production for Walt Disney Pictures, will oversee live-action films as a whole. I'm not sure if this includes Marvel Studios or Lucasfilm. I would assume it does. I don't know. It's just speculation. It's kind of all up in the air right now. Um, but I kind of just wanted to close this video out by saying, as exciting as this deal is, it's also kind of sad because 20th Century Fox as a separate studio will essentially cease to exist. Um, don't get me wrong, 20th Century Fox will still be around, it will most likely become a separate production label within the Walt Disney Studios, similar to Pixar, Marvel, Lucasfilm, Disney Animation, and Disney itself, but 20th Century Fox has had such a rich history as a studio, and they've put out so many great films over the years, the fact that they will essentially cease to exist after this deal exists, at least as a separate studio, is quite sad, and I know there's a lot of people out there, a lot of my own viewers, that love the films that Fox have put out over the years, so it is sad, but when you look at the changing media landscape, this is just inevitable that this was the way it was going to go, and there are some people that assume that Disney pursued Fox in a hostile takeover, that is not true. Fox was the one that approached Disney, and the Murdoch family simply did not want to be in the entertainment business anymore because they think they can achieve scale in entertainment through acquisitions, and they wanted to grow the news and sports divisions more than anything else, but they couldn't do it with the entertainment side of things weighing everything down, which is why they've decided to sell to Disney. Um, I, I never thought this was even remotely possible. I never thought that Fox would sell anything, so this is really surprising, you know, and hey, it sucks, but it, it makes sense from a business perspective, and I know there's going to be a lot of people that aren't happy about the deal, and that's, that's perfectly understandable. There are a lot of implications, both good and bad, insert, it's always sunny in Philadelphia joke here. It, it's going to take some time to really process. Either way, it's going to be a massive company that's going to control a lot of things. Whether that's a good or bad thing is entirely up to you. There are some people that are going to love this deal, and there are others that are going to absolutely hate it because they're going to worry that it's going to destroy creativity and that it's one less studio that filmmakers can take their projects to. Some people are concerned that, oh, they're going to make Deadpool TG-13, they're going to make everything super kitty. Not necessarily, because uh, people assume that Disney has an issue with R-rated content, even though they've never had an issue with R-rated content. They own Miramax from 1993 to 2010, and they produced a lot of really violent films, uh, like stuff like Pulp Fiction, 
Kill Bill Volumes 1 and 2, Clerks, Jane Silent Bob Strike Back, and Gans of New York. Um, and they also own Touchstone, which produce R-rated films such as Down and Out in Beverly Hills and Pretty Woman. So, and, and just look at the recent Marvel Netflix series, which are incredibly violent, especially The Punisher, where, spoiler alert, a guy's eyes gets gouged out. Um, yeah, and a guy, and uh, again, spoiler for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, the main antagonist, Billy Russo, gets his face literally impaled through uh, glass. It's uh, quite brutal, so Disney does not have an issue with adult-oriented content, just so long as it's not under the Disney brand. And regarding Fox Searchlight, I think, if anything, that'll probably get axed when the deal closes. I would love to be Ron, I hope I am Ron, but I just don't really see Searchlight fitting in with what Disney is doing, at least on the film side. Again, I could be wrong. We'll just have to wait and see. And uh, before, there, there's also one other little tidbit I want to mention before I end this video. The existing 20th Century Fox studio lot in Century City will remain with the Murdoch family um, because a lot of the people that work on the lot work in businesses that won't be going to Disney. Um, you know, one. Yeah, so there's a lot of valuable uh, real estate in that lot, and they will most likely license studio space to Disney when needed, but yeah, it will stay with the Murdoch family, so you don't have to worry about that going away. And Disney already has a pretty massive studio lot of its own in Burbank, so yeah. Um, I, I could go on for hours about this deal, but I think I'm going to end it here. This video... I want there to be a dialogue, and I want there to be a discussion. What do you guys think about this purchase? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? And also, what are your favorite 20th Century Fox films? I would really love to know. Whew, I am really, really tired. I am going to drink some coffee and then go on with the rest of my day. This is That Kid Douglas, aka The Unhero, and until next time, remember to stay frosty and keep it weird.